this particular session and following sessions really evolve around or revolve around th these basic principles and these concepts. And so uh, I'd like to kind of share some of those. So first of all, what is it about human beings that drives them to certain kinds of behaviors, that d drives them to focus on certain things? And some of those things that, that I believe is that human beings, over a period of time, have actually forgotten. We, we, we suffer from this thing called amnesia. We have forgotten what is true and good about ourselves, and therefore it's difficult for us to translate that to helping other people recognize what is true and good about them. And so in the, the, the workshops that you'll participate in and the things that we do, part of the, the core, and, and whether we're talking about diversity, we're talking about organizational leadership, whether we're talking about personal empowerment, all of these things really are crouched in these particular principles that, that I'm going to lay out. Um, and so it is important as leaders in organizations, as, uh, as folks who are in our communities and we're, we're engaging diversity and inclusion in all sorts of different kinds of ways, whether we're, um, you know, uh, a family member raising, uh, raising our children, which I believe is the most important job that a person can have, it, it is important to realize some of the pieces that we need to, to recognize in terms of seeing other people's humanity as well as imparting the, the lessons that others have tried to teach us about our own humanity. And so the, one of the first principles that we have to recognize is that our gifts, our talents, our skills, our abilities are not primarily to advance our personal causes, right? So the, the, the fact that I went to college um, that I have a master's degree, that you know I, I have a number of certificates and so forth and so on. If I primarily use that information just for myself, I am robbing the human family of the opportunities of understanding what, what I understand. Or I, I'm robbing those relationships that I could have from experiencing the, the most that they could be. And so it's important for us to realize that our fruit, if you will, is not for us. It is to be shared and to given and, and given to other people. And particularly when we talk about people in the helping professions, all too often we get we get this confusion that allows us to think that um, first of all the the resources that we we have responsibility for the the um, the, the ways in which we um, share those resources or uh, or uh, dispense th those resources have a lot to do with the fact that those are our resources. When in fact, what we know is that the people who are coming to us for service, the resources that I have actually belong to them. And so th that becomes an important part, to, uh, important issue to, to reflect on and to really think about that it is not because I'm so great that I have these resources. And, and, and you know, I, I think some of the nomenclature or the nomenclature of our organizations have led us to some some faulty beliefs and even faulty philosophies. Because we'll say things like, "My budget. This is my budget." Well, actually, what it is, particularly those of us in the helping professions, whether it's in education, whether it's in government, whether it's in law enforcement. Those budgets are not my budgets. They actually belong to the people that I serve. And so once we get that under our belt and, and, and recognize that these resources aren't mine, I am a caretaker. I am a person who is supposed to, to manage those resources on the behalf of of the public that I serve, of, of the people that I serve, the parents, the, the, um, the, the, the unemployed folks. And so those, if I keep that in mind, that helps me to maintain my humbleness. The other th theory or the other thought that needs to be in the forefront of our mind is that people are coming to us because they need help. And so all too often, as social workers, as police officers, as you know, um, uh, 
uh, educational uh, support systems. What we forget sometimes is that I have a job because people are in need. So because people have a deficit in their life, I have a positive in my life. And that is a huge responsibility that we have to consistently check and take into account. Because if we don't, then it's easy for us to, to walk over people. It's easy for us to use policies and procedures to, to limit people's access to what is rightfully theirs. If we don't understand that our focus and our purpose is to, is to further... Um, and, and, and close those gaps in what people need. The other thing that, that becomes also important for us to remember as helpers is the fact that all I'm all my job is is to provide I went to school so that I would know more than my than the people that I'm serving. But not just to know more, but so that I can instruct them on ways that they can make better choices for themselves. And so my college education, again, was not necessarily just for me. Although it was a great tool, it was a great opportunity for me to, to lift myself out of, um, out of you know, some systemic poverty and, and all sorts of things personally. But professionally, my, my, my purpose for going to school was so that I could understand, know what the resources are so that I could provide those to the families that I'm serving so that they can make better choices for themselves. And it was never for me to make choices for them, but for me to make, help them to make better choices by providing them with some sound um, resources that they could then use to make better choices for themselves and for their families.